Madam Web. This will be the spoiler review. I do have a non-spoiler review up on soundofbettermyhead.com. You want to check that out. Um, I ended up giving this movie a one and a half out of five. I actually honestly consider giving it a one. But I wouldn't say it's the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's got very few redeeming qualities. Um, even when they announced this movie, it didn't sound that like, that great. Man on Web's never been that cool of a Spider-Man character. And then you find out as they do the casting that they're trying to jazz her up, make her younger and, you know, prettier and all that. I mean, it doesn't mean the movie's going to be a failure. It's just like, you already took a character no one cares about and you're trying to twist her to your own, um, you know, fit your needs as a studio. Uh, on top of that, there's a lot of rumors about this movie supposedly almost was. Like, I, I hear a rumor at one point it was going to be like almost like a Terminator 2 Someone was going back in time to try to kill Peter before he was born, to kill Spider-Man before he was born, and that's how the movie would get started. Actually, I don't, I don't like that concept. It is too much like Terminator. Uh, there was another concept that this was going to take place in the same universe as the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. So I think that was going to be a way to kind of backdoor bring Andrew Garfield Spider-Man back into the world. Because I think they saw the positive reaction the fans had to Garfield's uh, Spider-Man in the Spider-Man No Way Home. And I think they were, like, looking for a way to kind of capitalize on that. And I think, you know, McGuire still has some love, but I think people felt that Garfield was a good Spider-Man in a couple of bad Spider-Man movies. Um, I don't know how true all these stuff was that I was, I was just talking about. You kind of see elements of both those, you know, concepts in this movie, so I don't know if it's coincidence or this was you know, what's left over from previous scripts. Uh, what they got left is, to be honest, is mostly garbage. Um, I guess we'll start with the plot. The plot is, if you see the trailers, it's what the trailers tells you. This paramedic, uh, Cassie Webb, almost dies, almost drowns, gets uh, clairvoyance, starts to be able to see the future. And then there's a bad guy, Ezekiel Sims, who can also see the future, and he knows these three girls are going to kill him someday as like spider women so he decides to kill them now and then cassie's powers help her like stay one step ahead of the guy and that's about the gist of it there's not enough meat added to that to really make this an enjoyable story um <clears throat> cassie isn't that likable she's obviously she's, she's got her issues and they explain them in the film so she's just real kind of grating she doesn't think she's fairly antisocial, even though she's a, a paramedic she does seem to get along with, you know, co-workers, which I'll get back to in a minute. Um, she seems to hate kids. You know, don't want nothing to do with them. Um, it, it actually kind of works. By the end of her film, I actually started to kind of almost like her character, even though she's, like, annoying. So it's... Because when you see her backstory, you kind of see her accepting this new role, and still she's still kind of snarky about it, and I think have her having these powers... Let's just still be snarky, like, oh, yeah, I could care for these kids, but hey, you know what, I know everything's going to happen, so. Um, the rest of the characters, though, just, I said the acting across the board wasn't that great. Ezekiel's was just not good. Um, I didn't catch it, but a lot of people pointed that out, a lot of people pointed out, and I've seen some videos, that there's a lot of overdubbing, like they did some ADR, like they, like they changed a lot of the dialogue after the fact, so it comes off flat, because like, he's not really talking to probably anybody, he's probably just in a recording booth. And it's just the dialogue's really bad. Just, everything's over-explained. Like, they always gotta find a way to put something there that the character could talk to to explain stuff that you should be able to figure out just watching the movie. Um, and his, his backstory is like, he kind of hints that he had this rough upbringing, but they don't they don't say why, what, exactly what happened. He just, does that, he needs his spider power. And he, they kind of ruined his, they should have, Introduces his character, he's security for Cassie's mom. And then when she finally finds a spider, all of a sudden it's a shock that he shoots everybody. He turns out he's like a bad guy. Like they kind of tease it, like, oh, I, I don't want to do this mission, but you can't find the spider. And then he's got this little spy camera out, which I thought was going to lead to him being some kind of a spy or something interesting. And he's like, oh, never mind. She's got the spider. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to shoot everybody. And so I think that would have been better surprise. Like, holy crap, this guy's you know, evil. 
and then the spider people in the, the forest were this corny like they look stupid like crawling down the trees look stupid the way they move you know jump from the tree chops look bad the, the the look looks stupid just the, the whole thing was a bad idea i'd rather have been maybe if there was one spider person in the forest not the whole tribe but whatever and then you kind of is it science or is it magic because they said he was cursed by this taking the spider so like they never really try to explain if it was science or magic it's just like hey yeah, the spider does stuff when people get bit by it um as far as the three spider women they're okay they're both they all got this like stereotype and they try to make them stick with it the whole movie they don't really expand much beyond that they don't they all like oh we got our sad backstories and how we're alone and you know we all got these quirks and that's it and it's like they don't really have any chemistry together or with with um cassie i think there are hints you start to see little hints of them bonding and you kind of see okay you you know you're starting to get the movie you might want with these characters and then they just get dropped um going back to the plot again if i want to nitpick so like i said the, the whole amazon scene is just mediocre we got into the spider people uh, we jump to the present day again it's just cassie not very likable and just it's whatever uh, she gets the powers which is fine they get this weird initially they kind of do almost like a final destination where you have this vision like you feel like you're actually living this and then all of a sudden it's like oh wait you snap out of it and it was a vision i um, was really vague about you don't know trying to figure out when the, does the vision stop and when does her opportunity to act you know happen it's like not really well explained but it's fine i've watched enough final destinations to roll with it um by the time you get to the end, they radically change her powers where she could do astro, proje astro project herself in like multiple locations at the same time. And it seems like she could actually interact with the world in these with these projections. So that's a very massive leap in what her, her power is. But I do like at the base level of her power, this clairvoyance is just, it's like, a, it is kind of a riff on the spider sense because Spidey you know, senses danger. It's like a sixth sense, like something's about to happen, he knows it. And then. You know, hers is on a, a completely different level, but she just doesn't have the physical abilities. Same thing with Ezekiel. He mostly just has the physical abilities. He does have these prophetic dreams. Like, he doesn't seem to necessarily have a true Spidey sense. So it's like, it was an interesting take on the, you know, the spider sense. Um, but anyways, most of the movie is her trying to get these girls away from Ezekiel. Um, there's, I do like the concept of, of an evil Spider-Man. Like, okay, this guy's got the power, but he's evil. But he's, they don't just really don't do enough with it to make it cool. Like, well, yeah, he, he takes out some people pretty quickly. He's climbing on the roof and he's throwing people around. But he's just—I don't know. There's something missing. I don't know what they could have did differently that really make it pop. But it's just—it's just not there. Um, and then, you know, the, there's a slow setup to the movie, and then once she starts kind of realizing her powers and she starts crossing paths with Ezekiel, the movie picks up and it's like kind of like, all right, we're on the run. Even when she takes a little side trip to go back to the apartment and the girls go to the diner, it's still, okay, we're, there's danger constantly. There are, you know, you always got to worry about the characters, even though you, you never feel like they're ever going to get killed. Like, you feel like they're all perfectly safe, the whole movie. Because it seems like the point is for her that, that these girls survive so that this future could happen. But anyways, it's moving at the okay, brisk. Then it takes this weird detour. She's like, well, in order to solve this, I got to go back to Peru. And then she just takes off for like a week somehow even though she's like oh on to the fugitive with driving around a cab with no license plates with a damaged front end but she goes to the airport goes to peru spends a week there learns to master her powers and flies back just in time for you know as ezekiel is catching up with the girls like i don't mind her going back to peru i think that should have been the end of the movie like she figures out her somehow her powers on her own but she's still got questions and in the end she goes back and like you know learns to master her powers or she could be this mentor character later not that we ever want to see this franchise again but that would have been the setup in my opinion and then just the we kind of come back with this convoluted fight in the fireworks warehouse which is just more corny it's yeah fireworks on one level are capable of shooting a brick wall and just destroying a hole through it and on the other level they could just you could just you know use a piece of metal to kind of just protect yourself from them so it's just it's just Fireworks just kind of like had a lot of plot contrivances to do what they needed to for that particular scene. And sometimes they just needed to knock Ezekiel, you know, Ezekiel on his ass. Whatever the story needed for that moment, that's what the fireworks could do. I said, it just it was it wasn't that good of a finale. It's just like okay, I'm just gonna keep stalling and looking at this sign a hundred times until like Ezekiel's in position. Like I feel like eventually he's like okay, 
she's kind of luring me towards her and she keeps looking at something over here. Something is here I should look out for. But now he just keeps walking and he walks right into this stupid trap where crap falls on him and he dies. And then he falls off the ledge and you know, that's what actually really falls on him and kills him. And then it's really contrived how she, she falls in the water and the thing hits her, I guess, in the face and she goes, gets blinded and I guess she's crippled too. Like they never really say that she lost, can't, y'all. You know, they never even flat out, flat out say she's blind and crippled. They just, her eyes are bandaged and they, later on she's got glasses on and she's in a super souped up wheelchair for some reason. But then they make a comment like, oh, you left your mail downstairs again, your junk mail. Like, can she get downstairs? She's in a fucking wheelchair. Like, what's going on here? Are they just kind of doing a call back to early in the movie? Um, and then they have the flash forward of, you know, her as like, astro projecting herself as doing her mentor thing, I guess. I don't know. Like a bird's of prey. Um, I could probably rip on so much of this movie and the plot and the characters. And it's just, all, none of it's really that good. And it's, I don't know what you could have different, did, diff, did differently to really save it. It just, it just never really works. Um, but the, the biggest thing, the biggest annoyance is they felt like this has got to tie into Spider-Man somehow. And like I said, there were supposedly versions of the script where it, it was a little bit more organic how it might have tied in the Spider-Man. But here it's like they stripped all that away. They vaguely left another timeline where it could have lined up with the Tom Holland Spider-Man being the Spider-Man in this universe. But they strip all that away, but they still want it to be Spider-Man. So, yeah. And there was rumors that her co-worker was, was Uncle Ben. And I was like, that's kind of stupid. And then sure enough, her co-worker is Uncle Ben. And it is kind of stupid. But whatever. And he's got dropping hands like oh I think I found the one so obviously he's talking about Aunt May but he never says her name um, and then also now we're rolling into the, you know we meet uh, Peter's mom you know she's pregnant with Peter at this time she's got to make a corny comment about oh he's just jumping around in there all the time it's like it's just stupid because you know like, you're trying to imply that he's Spider-Man but Peter wasn't like an athlete he was a you know dorky you know nerd he, he wasn't jumping around until you get spit by a spider. It was just this forced line of dialogue to say, he's going to be Spider-Man someday. And then they're doing this stupid thing where they're going to give the baby his name. And for some reason, they intentionally avoid saying that he's Peter. Like, I don't know. If you're going to do it, do it at this point. Like, why, why speed around the bush like this? Um, and they said, a couple of these are, I said, they're just, it's like, come on, guys. Are you seriously, this is so forced. But the one that literally made me roll my eyes is when the, head of this spider tribe makes a, his version of a great power, great responsibility line and is just like, oh my god I can't believe you just put that in there. He's like, you're trying too hard to make this Spider-Man and it's not Spider-Man. Um, just uh, and The only one I almost kind of liked is that when they make a comment that, that after Peter's born that Ben thinks it's pretty cool to be an uncle because it's none of the like responsibility of being a parent, but like the fun of having the nephew. And Madame Web makes a joke like that's what he thinks because she knows that he's got to raise Peter. I think some people are looking at it even darker, like oh he's gonna get shot. But I think I look at it as just now like he's got to actually be a father to this kid. Although it's weird, I guess you know, she's not gonna warn anybody what's gonna happen. Yeah. Maybe she knows it's for the best, but I don't know. That gets to a whole other level of putting a lot of thought into how these psychic powers work that you know they don't want to put that kind of thought into it. Because now she's almost like kind of God tier with these powers and, you know, how do you work with a character that can see everything that's about to happen and still make it interesting and make her like, you know, she, you know, she could see everything and kind of ruins it unless she you know, knows it's got to happen whatever that's about a movie that's probably never going to happen and a character we're probably never going to see again at least this version of her uh, fortunately there is no uh, post credits or mid credit scenes I really wasn't going to stick around anyways you know to see because I just didn't care by the time the movie was over um, the only a few, other, a few other things it looked okay like I thought that when she was in the web you know, a couple scenes, very blatant CG, but I know it was supposed to look kind of like ethereal, so okay, that was fine. It just didn't, I don't think it looked the greatest, but it was fine for what it was. Um, so I don't think we got enough good looks at Ezekiel doing the Spider-Man thing. I think that's what I think would, all, well, I think would really help pop the, he's a Spider-Man basically, but evil. 
Like you just kind of see them jumping around here and there. You know, just you never get a good clue, clue look at them. The action's never that great because again, you got three civilians running away from a guy with Spider-Man powers, and they got it. It's hard to make it a fair fight. Uh, the shock in the ambulance thing was set up as this big thing in the movie, and it, like the trailer is such a kind of a, a I say a throwaway thing. Like, okay, this is one of the things they do to stop him. But no, that's like the only thing they do to stop him until they have to go to the finale. And that, like I said, that like, just looks silly. Um, even the spider. The spider looks so big and fake and colorful. It's like, ah, whatever. And I don't know why he was hanging on this spider. They never explained why the girls killed him in the future to get this, this spider. They never explained how he got rich from having this spider. Like, Okay, I got I, I got Spider Man powers now. I'm a billionaire somehow. Like, it's being Spider Man never helped Peter make much money. I know he's supposed to be this down on all his, his luck character, but you know, unless he would have stuck with the pro wrestling thing long enough. But even that, it's more of a celebrity thing than a, what Ezekiel might have been doing. But I think I spent way too much time talking about this movie. It's just I definitely do not recommend this. If you just really enjoy superhero movies and you kind of want to laugh at some of the bad dialogue and whatnot maybe you want to watch it but it's one of the few movies i would say yeah don't bother with i don't think there's enough re redeeming qualities about it whatsoever and it's not leading to anything it's not like oh if i don't see this i'm not going to know what happens in craven or whatever yeah you, know, you could i think totally skip this one but other than that um like i said i do have the non-spoiler version of this up i have some other reviews for tv shows movies video games i got my comic strips and those are all sound of my head.com so thanks for watching